Back in 2015, I was working as a live-in home health aide for a wealthy family. It was just me and my patient living in a very nice condo in a quiet neighborhood on a golf course. We were the youngest people who lived there. I was 27 at the time. My patient was a 21-year-old male with Asperger's, SPD and BPD, and also some substance abuse problems too. He had recently got into some trouble and been legally declared incompetent. His name was Jake. Now, Jake was a nice kid, but he had severe emotional issues and almost no social awareness, compounded by the refusal to take prescribed medication, which worked incredibly well when he took it, mind you, and drug abuse as well. It was a real challenge. He was taken advantage of a lot because of the crowd that he hung around with. Right before I moved in, in fact, six friends came to hang out with Jake one day and ended up staying for two weeks, draining Jake's bank account on various drugs like meth, coke, MDMA, weed, you name it, and absolutely trashing the condo. Jake was lonely though, and he just never really said no to people. He wanted them to like him. But quite honestly, I think Jake was like maybe 14 or 15 year olds mentally, so I think that he turned to drugs to deal with depression and anxiety eventually, and also to fit in with the people around him. He's much better now though, and things have changed a lot since then. But anyway, it was a real sweet gig. I was paid very well, lived in a nice condo rent free, and basically just had to keep our house clean, keep food in the fridge, and make sure that he took his medication. When I moved in, my boss, Jake's mother, warned me about a girl though who occasionally stayed with her father who was our downstairs neighbor. She told me that the girl was named Amber and that she looked younger but she was like 37 years old, tall, blonde and very thin. She was right too, she looked much younger, like 25-ish or something. She said that Amber didn't have a car or a job too and that she was an addict who liked to use Jake. Amber's father had custody of her two children and she would come visit the kids and stay for a few days a week sometimes. She said too that one day Amber asked to borrow Jake's car for an hour and ended up running off with it for two weeks. Amber was also the one who introduced Jake to the six friends who trashed the condo. In other words, she was real bad news and was never allowed to be in the condo. She wanted me to call her immediately too if Amber stopped by or Jake went anywhere with her. After the theft as well, she put a GPS on Jake's car or something and allegedly she could stop the engine. But my boss made it clear that she didn't expect me to be a security guard or anything, just to notify her of things that were going on. So, leading up to this event, I had a few run-ins with this Amber character where I had to politely tell her that things like she was not allowed to come into the apartment, Jake could not take her to the store or anywhere, no, Jake couldn't go to a party at her boyfriend's house, stuff like that. Amber was always spaced out too. She talked really slow and seemed just really wide-eyed and off. She explained to me that she'd been hit by a car at some stage while riding a bike recently and complained that she was the one who ended up going to jail. I was like, how the heck did that happen? Apparently, she takes a lot of Xanax and was under the influence. So, I think that that explains the spaced out part at least. But anyway, she was never really aggressive, but it was clear that she didn't like me and often would say things like, Jake is his own person, he's a 21-year-old man, he doesn't need permission... Whenever she spoke to Jake, when we saw her at the gym or the parking lot, she would be whispering sweet nothings to him, no doubt trying to manipulate him into giving her money or something. But one day, Jake was actually out of state with his father giving me a mini vacation. My best friend was staying over to spend a few days with me and we were drinking PBR and just watching RuPaul's Drag Race. It's like 11pm and we hear a light knock on the door. I go to investigate through the people and... I see that it's Amber. I ignore her. She knocks louder about 30 seconds later and I watched her leave through the peephole and I sit back down telling my friend the situation. Five minutes go by and she's back. This time though, she's pounding on the door like a cop. 
I'm getting annoyed by this because I'm off work and I don't want to deal with her craziness tonight, especially when my friend is over. So I say nothing and I go back to the couch. She knocks like a normal person eventually and starts saying, Hello, Jake, are you there? I need help. Hello. I still don't answer. But then I hear her try to open the door. It's locked, thankfully. Always, too, because I'm a habitual door locker. And this enrages her or something, and she starts screaming and pounding on the door just non-stop. I get up and look through the peephole again, and she looks like a demon. And her pupils were absolutely huge. So I immediately think that she's on something for sure. She looked crazed, though. Her hair was tangled and wild. She was really sweaty and just super angry. Looking back too, I'll never forget those wide pupils looking at me through an evil glare like that. In the end, I ask her through the door what she wants. She said that she needs to speak to Jake right now. He owes her money or something? Which was laughable, but she apparently needs a ride to her boyfriend's, like right now. I tell her Jake isn't home. She then asks me if I'll take her and I tell her no. I've been drinking anyway and I'm going to bed. She then let out a frustrated scream, punched the door and just left. My friend and I went to bed shortly after that and we didn't hear from her again that night. The next morning we are getting ready to leave to go to breakfast when I hear a knock like a policeman's knock on the door you know the sound when you've heard it. It's pretty much unforgettable. But I look through the peephole expecting to see Amber again. But this time, it's an actual cop. I open my door and I can now see my parking lot is full of police. And there's a van marked crime scene unit and an ambulance too. I honestly assumed at first that Amber had overdosed or something. But the cop wants to ask me if I heard anything strange last night. So I go ahead and tell him about my encounter with Amber and ask if she's okay. And he tells me that she's apparently in custody for the murder of her father. And does Jake own a crossbow and is it missing? And yeah, actually it is. It's been missing for weeks. He then says that I need to speak to some detective at the station. I started thinking about what had happened that night and... I don't know if she came to my door before or after she murdered her father with a crossbow nonetheless, like she's a Tyrion Lannister or something, but the detective told me that his theory was that she was a heroin addict and she was withdrawing and needed to get to her boyfriend's for more dope. She then tried to get Jake to drive her and when that didn't work, she asked her father who refused. And this is apparently what went down. So they argued, other neighbors heard that, and she killed him with the stolen crossbow and stole his truck. She only got a mile away too before she was signaled to pull over. She led the cops in a high-speed chase over the span of two counties before she finally lost control and crashed. The cops were only pulling her over on suspicion of drink driving at first, but when they went to speak to her... She told them that she was speeding because she needed to check on her dad. She thinks that somebody may have stabbed him. They asked her why she thought that, but she allegedly wouldn't answer. They sent police for a welfare check and they found him before her sons did. And so, that was the time that my crazy drug addict neighbor murdered her father with my patient's crossbow and then went on a high-speed chase with the cops over two counties. So I was about seven when this happened. My sister was uh, unfortunately a really sick kid growing up and needed round-the-clock medical monitoring. So as a result, we had a staff of lovely nurses who would come stay at night and make sure that she made it through the night okay. There was only ever one nurse per shift and they would stay up and watch cartoons quietly in our living room. And me being a little kid, I love cartoons as well, so... I would wake up most nights at 3 and go into the living room for some secret snacks, a snuggle and some Bugs Bunny. These nurses were like family to us at this point and I adored them. 
anyway. One morning, I woke up to see a nurse that I didn't recognize sitting on the couch. I thought that that was unusual because it was always the same four ladies rotating through shifts, but I was willing to make a new friend. I walked down in my blanket and introduced myself. This new lady said, nice to meet you so and so, I'm here to watch your sister and to make sure that she stays with us. I thought that this was a sort of odd statement and I also noted how her clothes resembled the clothes that I saw my mum wearing in photos when she was a teenager, late 80s clothing. But nonetheless, I sat down on the couch. When after a few seconds, one of my sister's usual nurses came out of the kitchen with two cups of tea and said, Who are you talking to, sweetheart? I heard you get up. I quickly looked over, but the woman beside me was gone. And I was obviously very confused. I uh, told her the entire story and... She said that I must have been sleepwalking, but it's still a very real memory to me. And I mean, I even smelled her perfume as I sat beside her on the couch. I also want to add too that during the time my sister was sick, we, my mother in particular, had many, many experiences, which makes me believe to this day that my sister, she was being taken care of, not only by people in this realm, but also by people in the next. I'm a female and was 19 years old when this took place. It wasn't overly late, probably about 8pm, but it was winter so it was already dark. I was walking home from visiting a friend and about 20 minutes from home. It was quiet and I had my headphones in just listening to music, so I didn't hear this guy approach from behind me. All of a sudden, this cyclist has slammed his brakes on directly beside me and is staring at me. I take my headphones out and I glance at him, but he doesn't speak, just stares. I keep walking, I'm pretty close to home now anyway, so I wasn't too worried. This guy starts cycling again, slowly now, matching my walking speed. I keep my eyes forward and ignore him, fully aware that he's still looking at me. To get to my flat, I had to walk down this really quiet, dark country lane, and although it was very long, it wasn't an ideal place to be with this guy. So I stopped and glanced down at my phone, hoping that he would keep going. He did, for a short while, but then he stopped and turned to watch me. There was no way that I was walking down that lane with this guy still there, so I crossed the street and went down another road, a well-lit one with lots of houses, hoping that it would be safer. And that was when he said something that chilled me to my core. Hey, where are you going? You don't live that way. I know where you live. He could have been bluffing, but the way that he said it, I believed him. I was terrified. I dialed my parents' number and kept walking, aware of this guy following me even now. When my partner answered, I quietly asked him to come and get me when I heard the guy go, Oh no, and he cycled off ahead of me. I don't know what startled him so much. I guess it was because he thought that I was calling the police, but he took off and I'm forever grateful that he did. This happened around 2017 or 2018, somewhere around there anyway. I was in the 8th grade and quite tall for my age, 5'9". My house was for sale in my neighborhood and was filled pretty quickly since I lived next door to a school. Every day for a week too, I saw someone stand in front of the house and I assumed it was just the new neighbor. But one day I got off the bus and started walking down the street. It was in winter, Canada... And there were like tents where you put your car so it doesn't get snow on it. And obviously you can't see behind it. So when I was walking next to the one of the new neighbor's house, he was actually behind it. And just grabbed me by my arm quickly and started trying to pull me inside. On quick reflexes I hit him in the face with my keys and he let go of me. I quickly ran to my house and I called the police. 
he was never caught and the police patrolled my neighborhood for a week after that. And I also found out later that he wasn't even my new neighbor. This happened to me a few years back when I was in my early 20s. At the time, I worked in a department store at a makeup counter. But the job relies heavily on good customer service and building relationships because you want people to keep coming back to spend money on your products. We're giving personalized business cards so that we can build our own client base. Very important for a commission department. It's not uncommon too to be familiar with the people who frequently shop in the store. As workers, our training is focused on being friendly and accommodating. Now, one day while I was working, I had to move to a makeup counter that wasn't my own to cover somebody's lunch break. It was a really slow day, so I was just kind of leaning on the counter, people watching. I could tell most shoppers were just browsing, so I kept to myself. But one of the people that I noticed was a very tall and broad man. He walked very slowly, almost hunched over. His face was fixed very aggressively, like he was angry but focused. He circled around the counter a few times, but I could feel his gaze on me instead of the products. After a few rotations around the department, I decided to greet him in case he needed help. It wasn't until he came directly over to me that I realized just how big he actually was. I'm a 4'10", 140 pound female, so I feel pretty small regardless, but even with his slouched posture... He was well over six feet tall and well over twice my weight as well. But the one thing that I'll never forget is his teeth. They were completely black in the front. Your eyes couldn't help but go right to them as well. But despite his menacing appearance, he was really soft-spoken. Truthfully, I couldn't tell if he wasn't all there the way that he talked or if he was just weird. He told me no when I asked if he needed help but requested my number so direct as well. I mean, we'd never even spoken before. Obviously, I declined and said that I was in a relationship and that it would be inappropriate. He then asked if he could have a business card for the counter in case he wanted to get products. Since I wasn't on my normal counter, I really wanted him to just go away, so I handed him my co-worker's business card and told him to call if he had any questions and whatnot. And it worked. He walked away after that, filling me with absolute relief. Only a couple of minutes later, the phone on the counter rings. I answer with my peppy customer service voice and say, Thank you for calling, so and so, how can I help you? And immediately, I know that it's the same guy when he starts talking. He asks me again for my personal number and I explain once again that I can't do that. He just wants to talk, he explains. Since he wasn't getting the hint though, I say, I should have told you that I'm married, you can't have my number. And politely too, he apologizes and then he hangs up. And I honestly thought that that would be the end of him, but for the next few weeks or so, I spent much of my time at work anxious that he would show up. In fact, I would see him almost every week and he would lurk around the corner just looking for me. Anytime I would see him, I would immediately drop what I was doing to run and hide, or run to the closest customer and offer any bit of assistance to make it look like I was busy so he wouldn't talk to me. I successfully dodged him every time and it came to the point where I just stopped seeing him and I was thrilled. I had almost completely forgotten about him until one day I decided to go to warm up by myself to pick up a few things on my day off. I generally like to shop alone. I can take all the time that I need and I like leisurely looking around. I grabbed a basket and made my way over to the cosmetics, the hair and the wellness section since that's where most of the things that I needed were. I only managed to grab a few things before I locked eyes with him as I walked by the supplement aisle and I had recently changed my hair color and wasn't wearing my work uniform so I didn't think that he would realize who I was. I was ready to just go about my shopping and ignore him until I noticed that he dropped the items that he had in his hand and started heading my way. I panicked and swiftened my pace immediately. I thought to myself, he's not going to really follow you through the store, right? As I turned around to look, I could see his humongous body just plowing through people, with that same terrifying look on his face, but only meaner, his black teeth growing closer to a snarl now. Since the direction I was walking was the opposite of the exit, and there was no way in hell I was going to turn around, 
I decided that my best course of action would be to follow the perimeter of the store and cut down the center section, which would bring me close to the registers. I sped walk the entire time, in the hopes of losing him amongst all the people, but never once turning around again. By the time that I made it to the register area, I could actually feel him behind me. Still not wanting to turn around to look, I glanced in the reflection of the soda machines that are in between the register aisles to see how close he was. And to my horror, there was only about one, one and a half to two feet between us. I was afraid to just drop my stuff and run out the door in case he followed me to my car. I parked in the far back of the parking lot too and did not want to risk that. I also didn't want to get in line at the register since the lines were long and I'd just be standing out in the open alone. So instead, I walked into the cluster of people crowded around the self-checkout line. I noticed another large but older gentleman with his carriage in the middle and ran straight for him. The people were so closely clustered together that the man following me couldn't make it through. I ran over to the man in line and grabbed onto his carriage. I said, Hey, uh, I'm so sorry. I'm not cutting you, but there's a man that's been following me through half the store and I just need to stand with you, alright? He was actually really sweet too and let me be with him while we waited in line and even let me go ahead of him so I could leave quicker. As I was cashing out, I could see in my peripheral vision my stalker staring at me and just pacing about, but he couldn't come near me since the self-checkout is somewhat sectioned off. By the time I had finished and grabbed my receipt, I couldn't see him anymore. I looked around, but he was just nowhere to be found. I thought about asking the older man to walk me to my car, but he still wasn't finished at the register, so I decided to call my boyfriend and just make a run for it. Staying on the phone, I explained to him what was going on as I sprinted to my car in tears, frantically looking around in case he tried to follow me outside. I made it to my car safely and rushed right home, breaking down to my parents about what had just happened. Now, I could just feel it in my bones the way the man was looking at me that he wanted to do something to me, and thankfully, I didn't find out what that was. His aggressive aura was just palpable and to this day, I can still remember the adrenaline, nervousness, the sheer terror I felt when he followed me. I have never felt so vulnerable and helpless, even with all those people around. And so I quit that job roughly two years later. I had only seen him one other time there since the incident, but I still live in constant fear that we will cross paths again and I'm afraid to shop alone. Something that I wouldn't have even given a second thought to years before. This happened about two weeks ago. My aunt likes to leave on random trips throughout the year. Normally my grandfather will help her out and go feed her dog, but I don't believe that he ever stayed over since he doesn't live that far from her. And well, this time my granddad was busy, so she asked if I could help her out. She told me that she would pay me and I could have a house to myself. Her home is new. She had built it for herself, so I said, sure, why not? I could always use the alone time. The day that she came and picked me up to bring me to a home to look after a dog and just hang out, she was going to be gone for a few days, so I brought my laptop and electronics so I wouldn't be super bored. She kind of lives off in the middle of nowhere. She does have neighbors, but the location just seems out of the way from town. So she dropped me off and I headed inside and just watched some TV after feeding her dog and I remember falling asleep on the couch and having a horrible nightmare the first night but I didn't think a lot of it because I do have nightmares from time to time. It just kind of happens. The second night is when things started to happen that I couldn't explain though. I was playing BDO on my laptop at the kitchen table just to pass some time when the dog started to bark and it made me jump. I'll note that there's a lot of kids that play outside in this neighborhood, so I thought that she was barking at one of the kids at first. I got up and brought her back into the living room. She laid down, but was still making like a weird whimper, like she wanted to bark, but knew not to. So I just sat with her for a while and pet her to calm her down. I knew she got overly excited when she saw kids playing, because, well, she likes to run and join them. But after I fed her that night, there was a loud bang from upstairs. I thought that it was weird because how my aunt's house is set up, the upstairs is not where the bedrooms are. She had an attic, like a space built for basically an office or workout room kind of thing. Everything else is on the main floor. 
I thought that maybe a weight or something like that fell, so I went upstairs to see nothing was misplaced. I was just kind of confused and looked around the room seeing if just something fell that I didn't notice. I couldn't find anything, so eventually I just went downstairs to see the dog staring at me, but when I moved out of the way, she was just staring still at the stairs. I thought to myself, okay, creepy, but I chalked it up to her just being weird and I shut the door again. I decided that night not to sleep on the couch and rather sleep in a bed. I went to sleep in one of my cousin's rooms, but meh, they're children, so their beds aren't super comfortable. I figured that my aunt wouldn't mind me sleeping in her bed since I was watching the house, so I got up in my PJs and I headed into her room. I climbed onto her bed and got comfy, turning the TV on shortly after. My aunt's room is interesting in layout, so I'll do my best to describe it too. So you have the main bedroom that has her bed against the right wall, dresser to the side of it against the wall, and a dresser against the wall in front of the bed where a TV is mounted above it. Along the left wall is a small hallway that has two doors, one leading to her ensuite bathroom and then to a closet. So I was laying in her bed against the wall in case the dog wanted to jump up, and she had room there. I knew my aunt let her sleep up there, so I didn't have a problem with it. I had a random TV show on, and I don't really remember because I was on my phone playing a few random games to get me tired. But eventually, I fell asleep, and I had another just terrible nightmare. It was this dark shadow watching me in my dream, and it was just out of the corner of my eye, but it was always just there so that I could just see it. Other things happened in my dream too, but I don't really feel the need to explain it. Either way though, I woke up in the middle of the night because of it. I decided that I wanted to get some water, so I got up out of bed and walked out to the kitchen. I got some water and headed back to her bedroom. I came in though to see her dog just staring at the small hallway in her room. And yeah, I didn't like that one bit, so I walked back out to the couch and I called her, but... She seemed too scared to walk past the hallway or something. I walked back into the room and tried to bribe her with a treat or something, but she just wouldn't move. She was focused on something in the hallway, I think. I turned the hallway light on and showed her that there was nothing there. She was not having it though and just ran to my aunt's bed and sat by it. Eventually I just gave up and figured that she must just be weird and I walked back to the living room. I started texting some friends because I was pretty freaked out at what had just happened and I wanted to get my mind off of it. Sometime later though, my aunt's dog runs out of her bedroom and lays on the floor by my feet, only for there to be a loud bang coming from her bedroom. I, being way too freaked out to go and check it out at that moment, curled up on the couch and pulled her up to hug onto her. I turned the TV on and played it loud. Once I felt more confident too, I walked back into my aunt's room and turned the lights on. I turned all of them on and when I got to the hallway, I saw her bathroom door was wide open. But I knew for sure that it was closed because I hadn't used it and they keep it closed so the dog doesn't go in there. I decided to leave her room and just close the door to her room so I wouldn't have to deal with anything in there because I didn't want to go near that bathroom. It honestly felt like something was just staring at me from in there too. I know that that doesn't make much sense, but it's what it felt like. For the remainder of the time that I was there, I had to deal with more banging and her dog staring at random points in the room. One night it was so bad, in fact, that she physically was watching something move from one side of the room to the other. I tried my best to ignore it and just focus on my laptop or my phone, but man, I will never be staying another night there ever again. Now, for some of you, this might not seem all that scary or whatever, but man, it scared the crap out of me. I had no idea why there was random banging, why my aunt's dog was so afraid, and why she just stares off into space like she does, watching something. I feel like my aunt's house is haunted, but by what? I have no idea. And to be honest, I really don't want to find out either. I just hope that my aunt's dog will be alright. This happened when I was five and my best friend was six. So, a quick school layout. 
The building was L-shaped, the short end was not in use at the moment, and cars could stop at the right of the L in full view, or behind the short part, mostly obscured. The road was pretty much in the square around the school, but only in the aforementioned places cars ever pulled over. So we were at school one day, and she did something that made me angry. She grabbed my colourful pens without asking or something, and I wanted revenge. Shortly afterwards, recess started, and... About halfway through, I saw my best friend walking towards the back of the short building, and I followed her thinking that she was going to do something fun. When I rounded the corner, I saw a man in a car giving a candy through the open passenger door. Well, trying to anyway. My childish mind thought, why doesn't that guy just step out to give the candy? Now he's holding it just outside her reach and she has to climb in the car to grab it, and his seat will all get dirty. My friend had one knee on the car seat, reaching for the candy now. I suddenly realized that this was the perfect time for my revenge. I'd stop her from getting candy from this man. So I yelled at her that she wasn't allowed to be this close to the road. We'd get in heaps of trouble if caught near the road instead of on the playground. And that I would tell on her. This caused her to jolt back and she ran away from the car, back to the school ground, taunting me with the fact that a passerby thought that she was so pretty that he wanted to give her candy but not me. Apparently, a teacher saw me walk towards the road and was on her way to fetch me, so she was just around the corner from us when my friend started taunting me. She heard what was said and quickly ran the last few steps towards us, frantically asking, Did anyone get in the car? Did you see any classmates getting into a car? She was clearly panicking and the car was long gone by now, having driven off when I yelled at my friend. My friend answered, no, the nice man just wanted to give me candy, and she said that she'd tell on me, so we ran back. I really wanted that candy, though. Are we in trouble now? The teacher escorted us inside, had all the other teachers count heads, everyone was there, and talked to the police that were eventually called. Neither me nor my friend knew what the hell was wrong at the time, until her parents came to fetch her and gave her a stern talking to about accepting candy from strangers, saying things like, We've talked about this and we have plenty of candy at home. My mum was proud of me because she thought that I listened to the stranger danger talks and protected my friend. And at the time, I didn't correct her. A few years ago, my best friend and I were talking about our old school and this day came up. We both just realized too that if I hadn't have been so obsessed with those pens or if she had asked before taking them, that she could have been kidnapped and suffered a pretty bad fate. She couldn't believe how stupid she was for thinking that a random guy would really offer candy to kids from his car, especially since her parents had warned her about strangers before. I personally just felt embarrassed for not recognizing the situation from the talks my parents gave me and being so focused on getting revenge and all that. It took me a while longer to fully realize what could have happened to her that day. I don't know if the guy was ever arrested or did anything else. And after this incident, my school started permanently posting a teacher as lookout near the road. As far as I know, there were no other incidents at that school and it was never really spoken of again. The official reason for the lookout teacher was to prevent students from running out onto the road and getting run over. When I drove past last year, they had put a fence all around the school. I'm guessing it's because they finally realized a fence is cheaper than paying a teacher an hour a day to just stand around.